Hi guys, Jonathan Ferguson, Keeper of Firearms and Artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum here. Um, and a hello to those of you who found your way over from the GameSpot video game channel. Um, because something that popped up during filming for one of those videos prompted me to get this out of store to show you all here on our channel. This is the Treby Chain Rifle. Let's try and give you a good view of it there. So, um, from the front, we have a rifled bore in there. You probably can't quite see it, but it is rifled. 50 caliber, a short barrel, uh, rifle style sights. They're, they're not marked, this is a prototype effectively. This unusual lever, which I'll explain in a moment. What Mr. Treby called an endless chain of short barrels. And then a nicely decorated side plate, checkered walnut buttstock, and that's the Treby chain rifle. So there are only, we believe, four, perhaps five of these in the world, so we're very fortunate to have one in the collection. Um, this was the work of Thomas Wright Gardner Treby of Paddington in London. Um, he wasn't born in London, he came from Devon. The, the name Treby, I believe, is a Devonian name. Um, born in 1817, died at the relatively young age, even for that time, of 56 in 1874. Um, he obviously moved to London to, to seek his fortune and seems to have found it. He became a successful uh, builder, later on a landlord, and in the meantime, uh, I guess with the spare time from having a bit of money, turned his hand to inventing. Um, came up with several patents to do with, uh, or, or inventions, to do with his trade of, of building. Uh, one for a shooting target system, which is quite interesting. And critically for us, two patents pertaining to this improvement upon the revolver. He says, improvements in revolving firearms and cannon. And as he puts it, it consists in substituting an endless chain of chambers, or short barrels, he sometimes calls them, for the revolving cylinder of chambers used ordinarily in revolving firearms. So that's all he claims in the patent. He's not um, trying to step on Samuel Colt's toes. Um, it's He's acknowledging, effectively, that, that Colt's already invented the percussion single-action revolver, which is, apart from the, the uh, chambers here, what this is. So I'll quickly demonstrate for you how it works. And it's just like a Colt single-action revolver. Each time you cock the hammer, the next chamber is re revolved into position behind the barrel, firing. Let's do that one more time. There we go. So... The only other thing about it, which he doesn't claim as a, as a unique thing, but does describe, is the ability, optional effectively, to seal the barrel against the chamber, so there's no loss of power. So the revolver cylinder gap is something that is sort of uh, fretted over for, for decades, and in the end we just give up and, and um, set a cylinder gap that's very small, uh, precisely made, so that you lose a bit of power but it's not significant and you make sure you don't put your fingers anywhere near that. Well, Treby's thinking maybe I can improve upon that as well. So the improvement is, is pretty obvious, I think, um, in terms of why is this better in theory than something like a Colt. Standard revolvers are limited by the size of the cylinder. If you could break out of that and string your chambers together, in this case 14 of them, well then you're more than doubling, tripling potentially your capacity. Uh, so that was the idea and this is the first time we see the belt fed firearm appear as far as we know. Um, there's no direct link, we don't see any evidence that people like Hiram Maxim in the 1880s who invent the um, belt fed machine gun, no direct connection there, maybe they found the Treby patent, we don't know, it's quite tantalizing to think about. Um, but Treby was the first to invent a belt-fed gun. So apart from 
perhaps inspiring the um, belt-fed machine gun, um, although we don't have any evidence for that. What's the legacy of Treby's impressive firearm? Well, it apparently was trialled, um, or at least tested, evaluated, um, by a committee of um, military officers in 1859, so a few years later, and they, t they took Treby at his word and had the chain extended to 30 shots, and apparently that still functioned reliably. Um, there would be an issue with the amount of weight hanging off the gun as to whether the mechanism is robust enough and your thumb is strong enough to effectively ratchet up all of that weight. But apparently that was fine, that worked. And it was found to, within a minute, um, on average, um, function reliably, and also to put a, a group of shots at 200 yards that was deemed to be accurate. We don't know the size of the group. So um, positive results, but presumably too expensive, too cumbersome, and um, more than anything else, there's just not the requirement. What's the, what's the military requirement in 1859 for a weapon like this? Arguably cavalry, um, but it, in, in any case, it doesn't go any further, and we only know of the, the four, perhaps five, that still exist today. Um, there's one at Ham in Hampshire Museum collection as well, a couple in private collections, and we're very fortunate to have this example. So, thanks for joining us, guys, and hope to see you again soon. Take care.